All right, so we are looking to find the area um, between 0 and 2 and y equals x squared and the x-axis. So the yellow shape there. And we're going to do this by splitting it up into n rectangles. And then taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So we're going to use n as our number of rectangles. This blue rectangle, example rectangle I've drawn, we're going to assume that that's the kth rectangle. So like first, second, third, fourth, kth. So k is the number of the rectangle we're on. So k is always an integer starting at 1 and counting to n. Okay, and then we're going to label the x value, x sub k, is the right edge of rectangle number k. So right here. And the we're going to use that. We're going to plug that into our function. And f of x sub k is our height of rectangle k. And then delta x will be our width of rectangle k. It's the width of all the rectangles. Okay, and so then ultimately our goal is the area of rectangle K. Um, well, hold on, I should say one thing. Usually we put a star on this point that we're plugging into F um, because we don't always do right endpoints, but here we're going to do right endpoints. So when we do right endpoints, the point that we're going to plug in to our function to get our height is going to be the same as our x sub k, which is always the right edge no matter what. So the area is going to be of rectangle k is f of x sub k star times delta x. And then the entire area is approximately the sum, starting with rectangle 1 and ending with rectangle number n of adding up all the areas of each of the individual rectangles. Okay, and then if we want the exact area, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum. All right, so what I want to do in this video is I just want to go over again how we find this exact area under x squared between 0 and 2 kind of slowly and pointing out each of the steps. All right, so I'm going to make this kind of small so we can look at it and right over here. All right, so we're going to use n as our number of rectangles, and we're going to let that be a variable so that we can take the limit eventually. Okay. And k is also going to stay a variable because we want to be able to think about any rectangle. All right. But now we can start solving for things when we get to delta x and x sub k. So delta x is b minus a over n. Um, so what do we mean by that? Our interval that we're looking at is from 0 to 2. And so... Our left edge is A, and our right edge is B. So B minus A is just giving us the length of that interval. So here it's 2 divided by the number of pieces we want to split the interval into. Our X sub K is going to be A plus K times delta X. 
that was the formula that we came up with today in class. So our A is our left endpoint, so 0 plus K. We want to leave the K in there because we want a formula that will work for any rectangle we're thinking about. And then our delta X we found was 2 over N. All right. So we're saying we start at 0, and we move over a width of 2 over N K times until we finally get to the right endpoint of the rectangle we're currently thinking about. Okay, and so then because we're going to do right endpoints to find the height, we can go ahead and plug that number directly into our function to find the height. So we're going to want, let's simplify this, this is 2k over n, f of 2k over n, and our function was x squared, so when you have f of something, you replace all the x's with that thing, so 2k over n quantity squared. All right, and this is our height. Of rectangle K. All right, and so that's the height. So even though it has a width in it, that is not the width, just the height. So to find the area of rectangle K, we're gonna take that height and multiply it by the width. Okay. So now the total area is approximately the sum, starting at the first rectangle and ending at the last rectangle, of all of these areas. And the exact area is the limit as we let the number of rectangles we have go to infinity. They get skinnier and skinnier, and it gets closer and closer to the real area. Okay, so now how do we actually find this limit? First thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify. Limit, as so n goes to infinity, sum k goes from 1 to n of 8k squared over n cubed. And then we're going to think about over here in our thought bubble, what this sum is actually doing. So it's saying 8 over n cubed 1 squared plus 8 over n cubed 2 squared plus 8 over n cubed 3 squared plus dot dot dot, and eventually we're going to get to the nth one, right? But I want you to notice a few things. Okay, the first is that this is the area of rectangle one. This is the area of rectangle two, and so forth. So you're just adding up areas. The second thing I want you to notice is that there is an eight over n cubed in front of each of these terms. So even though n is a variable, it's the same n in front of every one of these things that we're adding up. And what that means is that we can pull that 8 over n cubed out front. You can factor it out because you're just adding a bunch of stuff up. So this equals, equals the limit as n goes to infinity. 8 over n cubed, we pulled that out. Sum k goes from 1 to n of k squared. Now, this is a sum that we know. All right. So I should say that before we started taking the limit, this approximate area, this is usually how we actually use Riemann sums. Um, if we're going to use Riemann sums, we'll use a computer and we'll use a thousand or a million rectangles, however many rectangles we need, but a computer can add them all up and we can get with as much precision as we need because um, we know theoretically that this limit would give us the area. But right now, when we do these Riemann sums exactly, they ha always have to be a line or a quadratic or a cubic. They're really the only things we know how to take the exact limit of because it turns out that they always give us a bunch of these sums that we know how to find. So the limit as n goes to infinity, 8 over n cubed, 
and the sum of k squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Okay, and now we just need to find this limit. This is a limit like we found at the beginning of the semester. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. If we multiply all this stuff out, we're going to get 16n cubed plus 24n squared plus 8n all over 6n cubed. And now we divide through by the highest power of n in the bottom because we're getting an infinity over infinity. And we're almost done here. Limit as n goes to infinity of 16 plus 24 over n plus 8 over n squared over 6 n cubed over n cubed, so those go away. So just 6 on the bottom. And on the top, we notice this is going to 0 and this is going to 0. So we're left with just 16 over 6. And that is 2 and 2 thirds is our exact area. We did it.